Okay, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with various information on colleges and universities, financial aid resources, skilled trade professions, technical schools, training programs, employment opportunities, career exploration, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and today we have the pleasure of having Lawrence Technical University with us today. Hi, Emily, welcome. Thank you. All right, and with that, I will go ahead and get started. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask me a question. Um, and if not, I can check the chat box at the end of the presentation and get to your questions then. Um, so let me just go ahead and screen share. All right. Like Tony said, I'm from Lawrence Technological University. I am in the admissions office and I mostly travel out in the Macomb area um, as well as traveling other parts of Michigan and also out in Wisconsin. Um, if you have not been to campus before, we are about a half hour north of Detroit in Southfield. Um, this photo here is a picture of campus actually. Um, the, it's a big circle courtyard area and then all of the academic buildings surround it. Um, so it's just the smaller buildings in the photo. It's not those tall buildings in the back. Um, and then housing is just outside of this circle area as well as our athletic facilities. So at Lawrence Tech, we have about 3000 students and that includes our graduate students. So we have about 2000 undergraduate students that are also working on their bachelor's degrees, just like you guys would be right out of high school. Um, we have students from just about every state actually, which is pretty neat. Um, and also we have a various amount of countries that are represented as well. Our average class sizes at Lawrence Tech are very small. Our average student to faculty ratio is just 11 to one. Um, so with that being said, you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from your professors. We don't have any teaching aids or anything like that. All of our classes are taught by full-time faculty members. Um, all faculty members are required to have their master's degrees. Most of them actually have their doctoral degrees. So they are very advanced in the subjects that they are teaching, which is great for you. Um, they've also worked in the industry that they teach so that they can help um, set you up with jobs and internships when you are ready for those as well. Um, we have over 100 different academic programs that we offer, um, and we will go through a lot of those majors later in the presentation. So Lawrence Tech was founded in 1932 on this idea of theory and practice. So theory is going to be what you're learning in your textbooks, in the classrooms, in your lectures, and practice is going to be what you do with that information outside of the classroom. Um, a lot of our students spend the majority of their time in labs. Um, I mentioned internships and co-ops. We'll talk about those opportunities as well, actually. Um, so the difference between a co-op and an internship. So both of these opportunities are gonna be where you work outside of school. Um, the difference is a co-op is gonna be for college credit. So an easy way to remember that is co-op starts with C and so does college credit. So there's, there may be some class activities um, and meeting with professors involved in that co-op. You're still gonna be working, it's still a paid position. And then an internship is something you do on the side of your classes. It's not for college credit, um, but the same idea. You're gonna be working, it's a paid position. Uh, most students start co-ops and internships during their second year at Lawrence Tech. Typically students do about two or three different internships while they're a student. It's a great way to build your resume, make some money, as well as see what kind of place you wanna work for. Do you wanna work for a small company, a large company, something local? Maybe you want to do an internship um, in California for a whole summer and decide if that's somewhere maybe you want to move someday. So there's lots of opportunities um, and it's something where you can find these opportunities on your own through a professor. We have a great career services office that can help you find these opportunities as well. Um, so co-ops and internships are a huge deal at Lawrence Tech. Um, so you'll definitely be participating in those. Um, we have research opportunities. Now in high school research might mean that you are given a topic and maybe you're doing some online research with it, perhaps writing a paper about it. In college, these research opportunities are gonna be you in the lab working on projects. Um, it could be a hired position. Maybe a professor hires you to work on a research project with them. 
um, maybe you're someone who likes to write, you could write all the findings of the research project and be a published author. Um, our research projects are published in different, um, different magazines and whatnot. Um, these photos here show some of our labs that we have on campus. Um, the top right hand corner is one of our new nursing labs. Um, our students have labs on campus as well as a partnership with the local hospital system where they go and do um, kind of like mini internships called their clinicals at these different facilities so they can learn about different topics in, nurth in nursing such as mental health, geriatrics, pediatrics, and the sort. To the left of that would be our transportation design lab. Transportation design is designing what things like cars look like. To the left of that, it looks like it's another design lab, could be an architecture studio. And then in the top left-hand corner, that might be your just typical chemistry or biology lab. Um, you'll take some sort of science at Lawrence Tech and the labs will look very familiar to your high school labs um, that you may have seen um, just because you know, the safety regulations are still the same. In the bottom left-hand corner, um, that is one of our Blue Devil Motorsports labs. So we have something called Blue Devil Motorsports. There are different teams. These teams work all year to design and build a car. And at the end of the year, they race that car against other schools that have also built a car. Um, so we have this picture here is the SAE formula car. It races for speed. We have a Baja car that kind of looks more like a buggy. It races over rough terrain. Um, there's a motorcycle team. There's a concrete toboggan team. They go up and race in Canada in the winter time. Um, so students from any major can join these teams. Typically it's our engineering students because they do get class credit for it. Um, but anyone can participate. For example, they need um, these, all of these parts donated from companies. They need help from the marketing students um, to get donations and market their project to different employer um, companies. Um, so very cool projects. And if you are able to tour campus, you'll be able to see all of these. And especially walking through the engineering hallways, you'll see all of these cars on display from years past. In the bottom middle photo, that would be just a typical um, classroom. That one looks like it's in the College of Business. Our, we don't have any computer labs on campus. All of our students get laptops. So um, you can see every student there has a laptop, which is really nice. And then in the bottom right-hand corner is one of our civil engineering labs. Civil engineering is designing things like roads and bridges. They do a lot of work with carbon fiber. You can see in this photo here, um, they have a, a wood structure and they have filled it with a carbon fiber coil. And what they'll do is they will pour cement around that and then test that structure um, in the testing facility. So there's another civil engineering lab where, where there's a weather chamber where they can make it you know, rain, snow. And then there's also a heat chamber that can go up to about 2,500 degrees and they can test the structures in all sorts of elements, um, which is pretty neat. And actually um, sometimes that, that, that whole wing is um, used by the military and they do testing of their own. So it's very, um, there's a lot of high technology equipment in that area. And then the LTU zone, that's the laptop program I talked about. Every student will get a laptop. It's um, pre-programmed with all of the different um, software you need specific for your major, which is nice because you can not only learn that software, but also put on your resume that you know how to use that software. So that when employers are looking over your resume, they can see, oh, you know, they already know how to use this stuff. We don't have to train them. So that kind of gives you a leg up on your competition of other people applying for the same position. Next, um, we do have on campus housing. So we have four different housing units. Um, the one in the photo is on the left hand side there is specifically for incoming freshmen in that building. It's just you and one other freshman. Um, so two people in a room and then down the hall you have your bathrooms, the kitchen, laundry, things like that. There's also a workout facility, a giant kitchen area, lots of study rooms, a soundproof music room. Um, it's a pretty cool building. There's indoor bike storage even. Um, so um, about 1,000 of 2,000 undergrad students do live on campus, so about half of them, um, which is a pretty good number. Um, it's free to bring your car to campus, whether you commute or live on campus. If you don't have a car, we have something called Tech Transit. It's like a van system, and they can take you if you need to go to the mall, the movie theater, to the grocery store. If, they, if you, maybe you need to, you're not feeling well and you need to go to MedExpress, they'll take you there as well. Um, and that's free for students to use. Um, we have a couple off-campus studios, such as our architecture studio downtown, and they'll take you there for free, which is nice. You don't have to pay for parking or fight traffic or anything like that. Um, and then on the right-hand side, it talks a little bit more about our athletic programs. So these are all of our sports that we currently offer um, with the addition that they did just add a women's hockey team. 
um, to our athletic lineup, which is great. So on there, you can see there's a website, ltuathletics.com. If you are interested in playing a sport at Lawrence Tech, you would simply go to that website, enter all of your contact information, and then the, co the coach would um, contact you about coming to a game and whatnot. Um, we do have athletic scholarship available for our athletes. It is determined by the coaches. Um, we are part of the NAIA, which is like kind of like the size of a D3 school. So we do have that athletic scholarship opportunity, which is great. And then on this next page, so a few stats on here that I want to share. So the national um, percentage of students who get a job when they graduate college within six months of graduating college is only about 65%. So it's not too high. Um, however, at Lawrence Tech, 92% of our students have a job within three months of graduation, which is great. It's a lot sooner, it's a lot higher percentage, and it's also career specific. Um, you are going to school for a certain career. So that is what we want you to work in when you graduate. Um, the next percentage there, top 11%. Our students make in the top 11% among students graduating from every college across the whole country. They work hard and it really pays off for them. And that's partially due to those co-ops and internships that I've you know, mentioned before. Um, it's really important that students have the opportunity to explore what their career could someday be to make sure it's a good fit as well. Um, and then tuition is here in the middle of the page. So you can see it does vary, it's listed by college. So at Lawrence Tech, there's four different colleges and each college houses similar majors. So we have architecture and design, arts and sciences, business and information technology, and then engineering. So tuition is broken down between the colleges simply because certain labs require different upkeep fees and whatnot. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't vary too much. It's not anything that should make you change your major or anything by any means like that. Um, tuition here is listed for 30 credits for the whole year. So tuition is per credit, meaning if you take less, maybe that freshman year coming in, you only wanna take 24 credits, kind of ease that transition, you only pay for 24. If you did happen to take more, you would pay more. Um, and then you can see the total at the bottom to live on campus, about another 10,000. Um, so then your total then is about 45 to $47,000, just depending on what major you pick. Of course, that's not the total that you'll be paying because we have tons of scholarship opportunities. Um, so in the blue box here, you can see just a brief list of the scholarships that we have. If you are online, just ltu.edu slash scholarships, that's where you're going to find all of our scholarship opportunities. Um, the biggest is going to be the academic scholarships. Those are the, the scholarships that you're going to be earning for your grades, your GPA, if you've taken, a, if you've taken the SAT or ACT. Um, so those are all listed on the website. You are automatically reviewed for those academic scholarships when you apply. So those are not a separate application. However, the rest of the scholarships on this list are. Um, so there are some full tuition, full tuition fee scholarships that require a separate application. Um, there's an extra essay on there, of course. Um, and then we have a scholarship competition where you write an essay and take a math test in order to earn extra scholarship money. We have those athletic scholarships I mentioned. Um, if you're on a FIRST Robotics team um, or on a DECA team, there are scholarships available specifically for you as well. So there's tons on there. Be sure to check out the website for all of those. Some of them also have application deadlines you'll want to check out. If you are a senior, um, February 1st is a pretty common app, uh, scholarship deadline, so be sure to, to jump on these pretty quick. Um, and then filling out the FAFSA, our school code is on the bottom there. Um, if you do live in Michigan and are seriously interested in coming to Lawrence Tech, be sure to put Lawrence Tech first on your FAFSA application when it asks for a list of schools you're applying to. The reason for that is there's something called the Michigan Tuition Grant, and it's specifically for students who are going to be attending a private school in Michigan. Lawrence Tech is a private school. Um, while it's not guaranteed every year, the last couple of years, it's been about $2,000 per year for each student. Um, and it's simply because you are you know, putting Lawrence Tech first on your application and attending that private school. It's not gonna lock you in. You don't have to come to Lawrence Tech. You can totally change your mind. Um, or maybe you've already filled it out and you wanna change it and put Lawrence Tech first. You can do that as well. Um, you can contact us and we can help you figure out how to change it. Or if you're gonna be going somewhere else, you can change it. It doesn't lock you in, um, but it is you know, just a couple thousand dollars typically is the average um, of free money just for you. A grant is money that you don't have to pay back. So that's awesome. And then this next page here. So on the left-hand side is going to be how to apply. So if you are an incoming freshman, first year student, um, you're gonna fill out the online application and you will send in your high school transcripts. And then there's an essay portion. And um, if you have taken the SAT or ACT, you'll send those scores in. They are optional. They're not required to be admitted or to receive scholarships. 
for our fall 2021 students. Um, if you're a transfer student, it'll be all of the same things with the, with the addition of your um, transfer, your transfer transcripts as well. Um, now, if you are in high school and you're taking college credits, we will review um, those dual enroll credits for college credit as well. Um, just be sure to put it on your application and send those transcripts in. Um, it's really exciting when we have students that have dual enrolled. Um, so yeah, just be sure to tell us about it so we know about it. And then on the right hand side are all of the majors that we offered. Again, Lawrence Tech is um, divided into four colleges, architecture and design, arts and sciences, business and information technology, and then engineering. Um, so I'll go through some of the majors in case you haven't heard of them before. All of the majors with the blue dots are going to be our bachelor's degrees. So those are your, your typical four year bachelor's degrees. The green dots are going to be master's programs, uh, meaning that is grad school. So you would do four years of undergraduate study and then you would graduate and then you would apply for this master's program. Some of our programs are combined programs, um, meaning if you decide coming in freshman year that you want it, you are wanting to get your master's, if we know ahead of time, we can help set up your program so that you can graduate a year early, essentially. Um, but there's a few programs like that. So in the College of Architecture and Design, the largest program, of course, is architecture. Um, we have the largest um, architecture program in Michigan, one of the best in the country. Actually, our students can graduate in six years instead of about 10 years that it can take at other schools. Um, so how it works is you have about three years of undergraduate study. And then that fourth year, um, you're going to start working on your graduate programs, which can be done online or on campus. And the great part about that is, is that at the same time, you're going to be doing um, your internship hours. And those internship hours can then be done anywhere in the whole world um, because you can do your master's program online. Um, and then you'll sit for your licensure exam. Game design is designing what video games look like. So it's a very popular program, especially in the Metro Detroit area. And then um, we do have um, that transportation design as well that I talked about, designing what cars, cruise ships, buses, things like that look like. In the College of Arts and Sciences, it's a lot of natural sciences, um, chemistry, physics, uh, biology, um, kind of tied in with this college is gonna be the pre-professional program. So perhaps if you're thinking of going to med school and you want a biology background, making sure you're taking all of those biology classes, you would probably pick a major in this college. You have an advisor that'll make sure you're taking all the right classes. Um, and then you'll graduate and then you would go to say med school somewhere else or dentistry school somewhere else. Um, also in this college, um, one of the bigger programs is gonna be computer science. Um, there are four different concentrations you can see there. Um, it's also offered as a direct entry master's program. So you can get your master's in five years instead of six years, which is great. Um, and then we also have uh, that nursing program I talked about in the College of Arts and Sciences. And then in business and information technology, you can major in business or information technology. Within business, there are several concentrations you can pick from. And then they're also both offered as a master's program as well. Um, while it's not required, a lot of students will tack on a business minor. For example, if you're an architecture student and you want to open your own architecture firm someday, maybe you want to have that business background. Um, so a lot of students will decide to do that. And then lastly, in our College of Engineering, it's clearly our largest college. We were established as an engineering school. Um, so we have tons and tons of majors offered here. So audio engineering technology, that is gonna be anything from designing noise cancellation in a car to speakers and stereo systems. They have a recording studio um, about 20 minutes off of campus where they um, work with real recording artists. We also have biomedical engineering that's designing things like skin grafts, skin cells, um, they do a lot of work with athletes and injury, whether it's preventative or helping them um, recover afterwards. Civil engineering is when, uh, when I talked about those roads and bridges that they work with carbon fiber. Computer engineering, that's designing more the hardware side of computer. Um, and then computer software is the software side of things. I'm sorry, computer science is more the software side of things. Electrical engineering and mechanical engineering, those are our two largest majors on campus. They have several concentrations to pick from. Um, it is when you graduate, it is that broad um, major that you have on your degree, and then you can have that concentration as well. You can pick several if you want to. And then robotics engineering, um, that we had one of the first programs in the whole country, actually. It's pretty exciting. Um, if anyone's on first robotics teams in school now, um, that might be an attractive major to you. And then the last one on there with the blue dot is, uh, has the blue and green dot next to it, architectural engineering. That's a direct entry master's program. It's not offered as just a bachelor program. So it's about a five year program. Um, maybe for someone who is interested in architecture, but they also really like engineering, um, that would be the perfect major for you. And then in the College of Engineering, we do also have our two only doctoral programs on campus. 
So that is pretty much all of the information I have for you. Um, so on here is my email, my phone number. Um, I'm not on campus a lot right now. We are pretty remote for the most part. Um, so email is best. Um, but if you do uh, leave me a voicemail, that, that'll come to my email. So I will be able to contact you. We're hoping to be full-time on campus very soon. Um, but in the meantime, I mean, come visit campus. We are offering tours right now. We don't have our big programs happening, but we have daily tours on campus, um, very small group numbers um, to keep everyone safe. We also have lots going on virtually. So we have big events um, on a couple Saturdays coming up. It's a virtual event, uh, but all of our faculty will be there to talk about their programs. We also have more of a one-on-one -on -one with faculty opportunity um, at ltu.edu slash visit. You'll see all of these opportunities. You can talk to a coach if you want to. You can virtually sit in on an architecture class if you want to. Um, so a lot of opportunities that we're able to give you guys um, because we know that everyone can't make it to campus right now. Um, but I do want to make sure that I answer any questions for you guys today. So what kind of questions um, do you have for me? You can unmute yourself or I'll try and check this chat box here. Emily, I do have a question. Sure. Um, because of the pandemic, are yeah. you guys waiving your application fee for um, fall? Yes, I do have an application fee waiver. I will put it in this chat box here. It's just LTU 1932. And then there is a question about the SAT. So for fall 2021, we are test optional, um, meaning you don't need that test score to be admitted or receive academic scholarship. Um, we have not decided yet if we'll be test optional for fall 2022. So for any of the juniors right now, um, we're just gonna have to wait and see um, what happens if students are able to test in the coming months? Um, we kind of take the lead on what some of the other schools are doing. Um, I'm sorry, follow the lead on what other schools are doing. So if things stay as they are right now, I'm assuming we'll be test optional again, but we just we just aren't sure yet. Um, but for now, fall 2021, so any seniors, we are test optional. If you have them, please send them because we do use them for other things um, such as placement exams um, to determine what level of say math and English you can place into um, and start at but optional for now, yes. And um, what is the GPA requirement for admissions? So it depends on the program and it also, so we recalculate a student's GPA. So when we get a high school transcript, we see that GPA, but we also calculate our own and have only math, science, English, and social sciences on there. Um, so we take out things like the gym and health classes. We look at just the core classes. We recalculate a GPA. Most of our programs are looking for about a 3.0 GPA. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. And do you happen to have um, a bridge type program for students that don't quite have the three point for enrollment? Yep, you bet. So um, some of our students may not have the GPA that's required specifically for their program. Um, so what we can do is we can start them out with a more general major um, and then they meet, they can either come in the summertime and they may take um, a remedial math class um, where it's not really a class for credit. It's more they have um, a more sit down tutoring type thing. And then also those students have um, extra advising that they are required to do. They meet with their advisor more often, um, especially in you know, that first year um, until they've met that GPA requirement and they are comfortable to get specifically into their major. Also, um for students that are admitted and they find themselves struggling in a course, yeah. do you have tutoring available where they can get or can they speak with their professors and, and receive one-on-one -on -one instruction, help, assistance? Yeah, absolutely. We have free tutoring for all subjects on campus for all classes. Um, so they can either meet with a current student who has, you know, recently taken that class, perhaps that specific professor and can help them work with it, or they can get um, instruction from a faculty member. All of our professors also have office hours they're required to do each week um, where they have open time for students to come in and maybe review an exam that they just took or go over a concept in class they didn't quite grasp. Um, absolutely. Lots of tutoring opportunities. Does anyone else have any questions? I wanted to ask, um, you said you have a, an event coming up where students can virtually meet with professors and talk individually with them. Um, can, you, can you email me that information? Yeah, absolutely. 
Yep. Good deal. It's pretty, it's pretty great. I think that it's really important, especially because of how small our school is and how small classes are, that you really have a connection with the professors. Um, especially early on. I mean, how beneficial for you to get to class on your first day and you've already met the professor. Um, so yeah, I will definitely email you those. What, what is the, the student professor ratio per class? It's, yep, it's about 11 to one. Really? Yeah, so very small. <laughs> There's That's no skipping awesome. class. <laughs> that is awesome. You, you, you certainly will not get lost. <laughs> no. Good deal. No questions from, from you guys? Really? <laughs> well, then we're going to wrap things up. And thank you so much, Emily, for your time. We appreciate me. You yeah, no problem. And I'll follow up with an email. Good deal. Thank okay. you, everyone, for thank you so much for the information. I'll pass it on to my students. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank bye bye. You. Good deal. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Have a great day.